Okay, now we get to the uh, the nice video that I actually kind of wanted to do because I usually make the first video of my of today the uh, you know big rambling thing where I go over every a little bit of everything before going to the project. Um, but I wanted to just get BNB Miner out of the way, get that processed, and then I can concentrate on this because I'm actually still uh, actually analyzing this. All right, so I don't quite know what I'm going to title this video because, I mean, technically it's supposed to be about shorting Bitcoin, which is why I'm looking at Bitti, right, B-I-T-I. -I. Now, it's actually launching today, but obviously because it's launching today, I don't think Yahoo Finance has the symbol for the New York Stock Exchange for Bitti uh, listed yet. Okay, it actually is listed. Oh, okay, yeah, PCX Tor. What's, what's PCX? uh pcx nasdaq real time okay all right perfect i can actually use this okay so yahoo finance is just literally bringing this on so i actually need to add this to um that's by toe i need bit tie um nope that's not gonna work all right uh oh okay well there you go bit t all right Bit T. Wait, this doesn't make sense. Oh, okay. It's probably because this thing is literally just coming out, so everything's like screwed up. All right, I'll link to this, and then maybe you have to give it a day or two. Yeah, see, the stats are all like screwed up right now. Oh, this is kind of annoying. So we might actually have to look at. Oh, man, I already closed it out, didn't I? Yeah, see, this is the actual real price that's supposed to be. All right, it's because it's just coming, it's literally just launched on New York Stock Exchange, so that could actually, you might actually need to give this a few days. Or you could just simply buy the Toronto version of Biddy. All right, but, all right. Uh, okay, I gotta go to my Yahoo, close out Toronto Biddy, and add actual Biddy, because I am in America. All right, there we go. All right, done. All right, so I've been trying to short, you know, Bitcoin, right? Uh, I've been using the that Dex baby uh, swap or whatever that Dow King, uh, you know, talked about. Now the problem is you can still get liquidated. I've already lost two hundred bucks doing it in two intervals of one hundred dollars each, right? Some because I know that I'm probably going to screw up somewhere. Not surprisingly, I did because uh, it because I don't normally short, right? But this is like an unprecedented time. The time that the short was back in 2008, but because I got screwed over by E-Trade and they never gave me my money back until after everything collapsed, so there was no point in shorting anymore, which really made me mad. Like, my like my life was at a breaking point at that point. Well, I don't know about breaking point. A critical juncture in my life. I should been, I could have been a multi-deca-millionaire like, if it weren't for fucking E-Trade. So I want to make sure that I don't have that same problem this time around. Because, you know, I'm not in my early 20s anymore, right? You know, I'm going to, I'm basically in my 40s now. So, you know, you know, pretty soon I'm going to wake up one day and go, oh, geez, Jason, you know, you're, you're, you're in your 50s now, right? Because that's my nickname. I usually have everyone call me Jason and not Johnson. And I'm like, oh, geez, you know, do you have kids yet? It's like, you know, it's like, okay, you know, <laughs> you get, you know, clock's ticking, you know, the clock is ticking, you know, and because, uh, you know, my other siblings are pretty much completely worthless. You know, someone's got to carry on the fa Chan family name, you know. You know so, yeah. Oh, well, that's how it goes. Okay. Uh, so, I have no idea how I want to start this. Oh, God, that is so distracting. All right. So, oh, God. I guess I'll leave a link to both of these stupid tickers, even though I would prefer to keep my YouTube description short. All right, so instead of shorting Bitcoin directly and then having to worry about your options and margin calls and getting liquidated, you could just simply buy an inverse ETF. That's, that's one of the reasons why I've been so, um, you know, I've been buying SPXF. SPXS, right? Because, you know, let's say, let's say Greg Manorino is correct. Richard Hart is also someone I've been recently following. He believes... Like, he definitely knows what's going on. And he's still sticking to his 85% Bitcoin drop, at least. 
All right. So, so knowing that everything's correlated with each other, everything's going to dump, and of course, interest rates are going to have to skyrocket to combat inflation. You know, yeah. If the S and P five hundred drops to like eight hundred or even four hundred, like this thing is going to go up the wazoo, right? Now it's never going to approach this price because that would be insane. Um, but when I actually click this chart, if I go to max and I remove uh, I remove dividends, funny enough, it pays dividends occasionally. Then you know it does a one to five split usually. All right, this one did a one to ten split. Wow. Yeah. So the idea is you want to try to make the shares affordable for everyone, right? So so like you know somebody with like twenty five bucks can buy a share of this. So so I don't know. I guess. I guess well I guess we'll find out what the price of this is when S and P five hundred does indeed crash, if it technically does. You know, and that's kind of the reason why I want all of this stuff, right? So okay, there's really no I'll still link to this by toe, but there's really no point in buying a Bitcoin ETF. Why not just buy Bitcoin itself, right? <laughs> so or you can buy grayscale Bitcoin, I guess. Uh, but, you know, let's say you want to short the market and it does do what exactly it should be doing. It's basically the inverse. So right now Bitcoin is up, right? Which is up, I mean, this thing says 3.45%, 3.14. So this thing is actually down a little bit more than it should be, which I'm actually okay with, right? Because let's say you wanted to buy this now, you're getting it at a much cheaper discount. Now, the thing is, you know, you, put, you don't want to go all in on this because there is an expense ratio, which is, uh, which is actually very expensive, 1.35%. <clears throat> right? And if you, don't, if you didn't watch my stock market video, which is on the playlist, by the way, I think it's at the bottom of the list, right? Which you need to watch, right? And expense ratio means that if nothing changes after one year, you lose this amount in expenses because obviously this ETF has to pay their employees, pay for the commissions for stock trades, and they actually buy and sell uh, one day options, right? In the futures markets or whatever. So that costs money. So that's how, that's how these ETFs work, right? You're buying this ETF so you don't have to do that personally yourself, which is really annoying, right? I can't, you know, I can't be bothered to do it either. Like even though right now I'm shorting the market myself on baby swap, I actually don't like what I'm doing. All right? I want to short, but it's just too much. I'd much rather buy an ETF. In fact, my preferred is a 3x ETF. All right? Because I want triple the profit. Because I want this at the end of the day. All right? You can see on the far left. All right? All right? Look at that. $113,000 a share. Now obviously you have to adjust this for stock splits, but this I don't know. I guess this would come out to like $5,000. All right, imagine this thing, 2725 is going straight up to five grand when this whole shit show collapses. How much money that effing is, all right? That's a lot of money. So even if you had like, you know, 10 shares of this, 10 shares times five grand is uh, $50,000. Not bad for like, you know, a $272 investment, right? You know, they can do the same thing here, right? Ultra, you can do 3X up and 3X down. All right, so I'm hope like is it Bitcoin and crypto is still too new, relatively speaking, right? But I definitely would be doing a three x Bitcoin long and short ETF. Right now, things I still believe things are gonna go down, so obviously, you know, I'm gonna be looking into buying uh, BitT, right? But I gotta wait till, you know, like this thing goes down to its correct price, all right? Because this is obviously not correct. <laughs> this is obviously not correct, but again. BitT literally just, I mean, look, they, Yahoo Finance doesn't even have the name correct. They just have the, the, the serial number. So this this will probably take a day or two to resolve. Okay, so, um, all right, so Greg is, all right, so we're all pretty much short, or at least some of us are, right, including me. You know, but the debt market actually looks pretty stable. So I don't actually think the Federal Reserve and the ECB are actually buying debt today. It actually does look like a pretty normal day. Where people are selling bonds, right? Cash is leaving the debt market to go buy stocks and great, okay, click the not only do I click the wrong place, but it removes the back button. So now I can't. This is why Yahoo never beat Google. Like ever. Fucking shit website. 
But I mean, Yahoo Finance is still like the best finance page in the world. So, you know, you just have to learn to deal with it. All right, before I lost my train of thought because of that. That's very annoying. I know I was talking about some of us are short. I said I'm still short. And then I forgot why I wanted to say that. All right, well, I lost my train of thought. But this is why nobody uses Yahoo, all right? Except, like, if you have to. Uh, okay, all right. So that actually is really uh, disturbing. Me. Oh, yeah, so I know I was talking about three Xs. All right, so, you know, let's say when this thing bottoms out, best and P 500 is at, like, 400, 800. Well, the value of the... 3x long, 3x bull, which means we need it to go up if you buy it, is, where is it? This is ultra 3x, this is ultra short 3x, this is, this should be the ultra, yeah, ultra pro 3x, okay. 7.95%, this is approximately 3x S&P 500, yeah. So this is exactly what I want. So this thing's gonna be like, I don't know, like two bucks. Right, so you buy at the bottom, you know. Right, actually, yeah, we could look at it right now. So, uh, at the bottom, I mean, I don't know what this price will be if and when the SP 500 crashes to 800. I actually think it could go as low as 400, but probably no more than that because at that point, everyone's gonna be like, okay, that doesn't make sense. How could Microsoft be two dollars a share when obviously they're still there, right? You know, you could play your Xbox, you could, you're obviously using your computer, so that's obviously made by Windows. You know, there is at some point, like, we will crash the fair, actual fair value. And that's the time I want to buy. But let's just say, for sake of argument, you know, we buy at, like, the bottom, like, you know, because you know, you're going to wait a little bit. Let's just say $2 a share. That's what that black tag is. You know, it might be a little hard to see. Right? And then 10, 12, like, for, say, 12 years. You know, four years of Trump, eight years of Ron DeSantis. That's what I'm guessing it might be. Right, and then the markets after 12 years, your two dollar investment per share becomes like 76 dollars and 28 cents. I don't even want to bother calculating what the X on that is, but imagine you buy like 10,000 shares at like you know two bucks a share, assuming you shorted the market correctly. All right, you know, actually, I do want to actually calculate this now. So 76 dollars to buy it by. Uh, oh, and this thing has already, shoot, this thing has already done its stock splits already, and it was the price was already quite low. In fact, you can see it right here, yeah. 2 to 1, 3 to 1, 2 to 1, 2 to 1, 3 to 1, yeah. So this price does look correct. Okay, good. Very, very good. Uh, what, what was it again? 76.28. So 76. 628 divided by two dollars a share and you had 10 uh okay so that's a 38.14 x so where is the x button i actually did they change the multiplier vector cross product what happened to the x i have plus minus division what the hell is this why are you giving me a vector Why did it do that? What? Anyway, you have 10,000 shares. I didn't lose my train of thought that time. So not bad. Your $20,000 turns into $381,400. You literally didn't do anything. You, didn't, you literally didn't do anything. And this thing does pay dividends. Let me see. I assume, generally assume it's not a lot. Let me turn off stock splits for now. Okay, this thing paid a crap load of dividends. Uh, it's not breaking the bank based on what I'm seeing here, and they definitely don't look very regular. But hey, I mean, you do no work, you literally buy and hold, you're 100% passive, and you're just getting free money. And on top of that, you have that many shares, guess what? You can do covered calls. That's where the real, that's a, that, that's how you really extract the income from this, right? And the covered calls on something like this, you know, could be pretty nice, could be pretty nice. You don't even have to do the 3x. Like I personally just want to do 3x, right? You could just simply straight up buy the SPY, the S&P 500 itself, and do cover calls on that. I would also be really, uh, you know, really cheap. In fact, let me get rid of that for now. Let's take a look. Um, Spy Finance Yahoo. Okay. Uh, give me Max. 
I mean, this thing's going to go back pretty far. Give me five years. All right, see, this thing pays a regular dividend. All right, so at, at the tro at the bottom, the S&P 500 was at $69 a share. <clears throat> so that's not bad. $69 a share. This goes up to $475 approximately. Actually, you can't see it. Let me do this. Right, you, can't, you could kind of see it. But, no, not really, because my camera's blocking. But it basically says $475. It's actually $474. $474.96, but that's $475. Right? And you're getting these nice juicy dividends. It actually pays off a whopping a lot of money. So you can actually get your money back just off of the dividend income alone, and then the rest you just ride rent free, basically. Right? And, this, and, and look, let's say you bought, so actually, maybe instead of a 1x ETF, which is pointless, you just buy SPY, right? Do a covered call for the next, uh, today's June 21st, so. And that's the other thing too, because spiders are traded so often and frequently, you can actually do like three day, two days, five days, or two weeks. So in this case, let's do nine days. So it's June thirtieth, right? Okay. Let's say I want you to do a cover call on this. Wait, this is calls June thirtieth. I could sell one at three eighty for like a four hundred eighty dollars. This is actually four, yeah. Wait. Bid, ask, blast. Okay, let's just make it 480. I want to keep this simple. And that's if you have 100 shares of Spider that you bought at a discount at the bottom, right? You know, 10, 12 years ago. Now imagine, you know, if you had like, you know, 10,000 shares of Spider and you were doing these covered calls, right? That's $480 times 100 every nine days. What can you do with like, you know, 40, 50 grand every nine days? I don't know. I can imagine a lot, okay? So that's why this stuff is really important. And then now that I just talked about it, I just kind of realized now I understand why inflation is such a crazy problem because that's literally what that is, right? Instead of weaponizing inflation against you, you, you make it work for you, right? So you become like those rich scumbags that, you know, you and I like to, you know, constantly bitch about, right? Your super predators, your JP Morgans of the world, you know, your central banks. So that's why this stuff is really, really fascinating to me. That's why... I, as a matter of survival, you know, you, you can start off with a little bit and then it just ballooned out of control, right? And it's really about, you know, market timing, essentially, right? But unlike day trading, you're, you know, we have it a little, e we have it a lot easier. We look at the debt market, right? We have Greg Manorino's help. And then we just simply see what happens, right? So, um, so yeah, so you don't like the S&P 500. I'm also personally looking at the uh, NASDAQ, which is the triple Qs. So this one's a 3X NASDAQ short, right? So NASDAQ right now is up 3.12. This is down 9.33. So that's correct. It's actually down 3X, right? Uh, okay. I might actually buy, I actually might buy this. Not right now, but I definitely want to buy this because if we actually get... A nice little bounce up and then we get the economic report starting june 29th and it's just bad news after bad news and of course we got the uh interest rate we actually have the inflation report that's coming july 13th that's gonna be the big one so that at that point i'll definitely be looking to maybe buy this all right especially if everything just goes up everyone thinks everything's over right there's no more pain all right and then of course the hammer drops on everyone except us people who are going short so if I look at um, I don't have to click this yet again all right if we look at how 2008 played out look right now the chart looks pretty much like we're at this point right here January 14th 2008 you'll notice that yeah we did go lower but we did go higher for a short time and then lower again higher again dead cat bounce and then from right complete and total annihilation right but look at these dates it takes months for these things to move right now it's a little bit different because we have so much more money there's so much more people around and the federal reserves and central banks have advanced their technology obviously so you know history doesn't repeat but it does rhyme so I'll just take a look at this real quick all right this pattern and compare it to what's happening right now it's almost identical right 
So it does look like we're going to bounce. I'm thinking we might bounce at 38 20 38 37 50 or whatever the previous bear market was right that 20 percent mark i'm thinking that actually will be the resistance and we might bounce lower but i mean if i move my mouse over this comes out to around july 5th so that's after july 4th july 11th so it might actually turn it might pan out but i mean if we just get a bunch of people just just aping into the stock markets right now i mean we'll just blow right past it so again and everything's kind of manipulated right now and well i mean it's always manipulated now so i mean who knows how these distortions go so anyway it does, it's up to you to decide how you want to do it or if you don't even want to do etfs at all um but yeah i mean it's gonna to be tough because i'm gonna be moving in and out of these etfs right but these are like my longer term plays where i don't have to mi micromanage everything but you know, I do own SPSX, all right? I do want to probably buy more of that. I definitely am have my eye on ultra short QQQ, right? Especially after this thing is getting ripped apart, which is great because that means I can buy this cheaper. You know, I want to try to buy this at a bigger discount, all right? And then when, of course, you know, the bull, the bullish stuff, I don't touch, but I keep track of it. Right, because again, when this everything when everything bottoms out, if it does, you know, I want I want in on that three X, you know, bullish ETF. All right, I want my three X Nasdaq. I want my three X S and P five hundred. All right, and if things are that bad, I may even just buy spiders myself. Right, and then just enjoy, because I didn't actually do that calculation. I did it right on this video. Forty to fifty grand every nine days. My God, you know how much money that is. And if I get called, if I get called out or hit or sold or whatever, well, I don't, I, well, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I would lose that asset and I'd be forced to sell it at a profit. And then, I don't know, I have to find a way to park my money someplace else. Yeah, I guess I'll worry. I guess I'll worry about it later. I'll sell a much shorter duration, you know, much shorter duration call. Because nine days, I guess, is a lot. So uh but yeah so all right anyway uh i mean we've kind of just spread out all over the place but the principle is basically the same where do you think the overall markets are going to go right and then you and then if you want to bet in that direction you buy the etfs right these are the ones i've been looking at actually i didn't even look at the expense ratios but they're generally one percent so ultra pro is a little under one percent uh the expense ratio is 0.95 so it's basically the same uh, ultra Nasdaq is yeah I mean it's all basically about a percent and then you get dividends so I guess it all I think it all just you know what am I saying balances out I still wish I wanted to know what was the train of thought I had before before idiot Yahoo Finance with their shitty website yeah all right oh well so anyway, you can definitely check out these ETFs, right? Especially BitT and BitTo, right? Depending on how you want to view uh, Bitcoin, though BitTo seems pointless, right? What you're really interested in is BitT, right? B-I-T-I. -I. But again, I would definitely avoid buying this now because this is the New York Stock Exchange BIT. It's almost twice the price of the actual B-I-T-I, -I, which is on the Toronto Stock Exchange. So, because this is the real price, 23.15, it is not 38.66. This is supposed to be the inverse of Bitcoin, all right? <laughs> so why is it up when Bitcoin is up a lot, all right? It's up 3.79%. But again, it's because they literally just launched it like two hours ago. So I'm pretty sure there's like a technical hiccup or whatever. So I am done for the day. I've been rambling for 24 minutes. So like, subscribe, share this video. Thank you again to all the uh, old and new people watching this channel and this video, of course. I rely on you to spread the word around because, well, I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't actually tweet out my videos anymore. I'm just too lazy to do it. I mean, the engagement on my Twitter is like literally Jekyll and Hyde. I'll get a lot and then sometimes I'll get nothing. It's like... Uh, but, I mean, Elon Musk, I mean, the Twitter board just approved Elon Musk's deal, basically. So they just have to convince the quote-unquote shareholder of Twitter, which should be very easy, if not already a done deal. So we're getting our free speech back on Twitter, right? It's going to be 
It's going to be very interesting. People will troll each other, and then all these right-wing influencers and fake conservatives, they're all going to get called out. And it'll be nice that I don't have to keep, you know, shilling such said people, right? Because nobody's, I think, supporting me except you guys and gals. So I'm actually a little resentful about that. So it'll be nice to get some uh, payback for that and then watch their followers bleed out and go into real conservative, you know, groups. You know, people like, you know, the American Populist Union and John Doyle. You know, those are the people I'm actually currently backing, you know, because they're doing it correctly. They're not pissing anybody off and they're actually pushing, you know, Christianity and right wing stuff as far as they can without, you know, again, pissing people off. And of course, being, you know, very optical about it. Not like someone else that's just calling themselves the next, you know, Stalin. And I don't really want to mention the guy's name, but the, you know, the mustache guy from Germany, you know, approximately 1930s and 1940s, you know, that dude. So, yeah. So anyway, check out these ETFs. Uh, these are the hand-picked ones that I'm looking at. But again, you know, we could, uh, there's already too many links that I'm going to be putting out here. So, but, you know, you can just Google, you know, ETFs like S&P 500 3x ETFs uh, or 1x or 2x even if you want to do 2x yeah and then just take your pick all right that's for today I don't know when I'll see all of you next I don't know maybe today's Tuesday right so maybe Thursday you know I, I, I kind of want to just take a lazy day lazy week off because everything's gonna be slow there's no real major news coming out, so there's nothing that's going to roil the markets hard up or down. And that's usually a bullish thing, right? And again, I'm not really sure what's going on with uh, crypto, right? There's a guy that I'm following on Twitter, Crypto uh, Capo or whatever his name is, you know, but he's been right pretty much every time except maybe t this time around, which is extremely aggravating. All right. I'm also starting to see how he's coping a little bit because now he's referring to completely different charts to just to justify his old stuff. So it's kind of annoying. But on the other hand, I don't know. I mean, I know long term all this is going to go down before coming back up. So I don't know. I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. The winner will get to. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I mean. The inflation's going to be out of control, but how long does it take before we see that effect? You know, it doesn't happen instantly. All right, I'll see you all on Thursday. You know, we'll go back to a more traditional format, unless, of course, something crazy happens. So, um, yeah, I already did my outro. So, yeah, all right, all right, you're, you're free to go. All right, because I, I, I need it. I just want to goof off.